Good afternoon and welcome to your news on TV1. For the News First team, I'm Shehan Radhungar. First, let's take a look at your headlines. Telecom workers protest against sale of government shares. Professional Trade Union Collective to meet and discuss next course of action. BASL appoints committee to study anti-terrorism bill. Multiple factions oppose the new legislations. A five-member technical advisory committee for SLC. Now first up in news here at home. Employees attached to the Sri Lanka Telecom protested opposite SLT in Colombo against the divestment of government shares. Employees attached to the regional offices of Sri Lanka Telecom also joined the protest in Colombo. They claim that the SLT was making profits and the divestment of government shares of Sri Lanka Telecom causes grave injustice to the employees and the assets. The group attempted to march from Lotus Road to SLT. Thereafter, Sri Lanka police permitted them to proceed to SLT by foot. The Professionals Trade Union Collective will meet today to discuss their future course of action against the government's tax policy. Multiple trade unions, civil groups, student movements are expected to join the meeting. The Professionals Trade Union Collective will meet on Monday to discuss the future trade union action to be implemented based on the issues that have arisen based on the unjust tax policies of the government and the anti-terrorism bill. The meeting is taking place in a backdrop where the President is yet to respond to the Professionals Trade Union Collective for a meeting. Spokesperson of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Chamil Vijay Singh, has said that the discussion will be held at 3 p.m. On one hand, the false promises made by the government regarding tax policies are daily. On the other hand, plans are being made to suppress trade unions and union activists. There is much opinion about the anti-terrorism bill as well, which is to come as a repressive act. This is all under the guise of economic reforms. The government is making dynamic decisions regarding economic centers. With all this going on, these professionals, employees and workers should come together for the freedom of the citizens of this country. So today, for the first time, all trade unions and civil organizations and student unions of this country are here together for a discussion regardless of party politics or differences in profession. The anti-terrorism bill brought by the government is going to create a serious problem for all the citizens, professionals and trade unions of this country in the future. With this, it would come to a point where no person would be able to raise their voice for their rights. Therefore, this meeting is scheduled to discuss this and to take decisions regarding the serious situation that has arisen in the country so far. Accordingly, today we have decided how to deal with the government as trade unions and as citizens of the country. Accordingly, the future plans of the trade unions are to be decided at this meeting. Now the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says that the government which claims that it is bankrupt is now bribing MPs. The opposition leader made these remarks at a meeting held in Burala yesterday. <laughs> Kuli Kankaruagidala, Pau Galika Seva, Aitanavala, Seve Karana, 
From the daily wage earners to the private employees, all the 22 million citizens of Sri Lanka have been left in dire straits. This is because when we attempt to solve the problem, all they say is that they do not have money. When the farmer asks for concessions, when the fishermen ask for concessions in fuel to carry on their occupations, the government responds saying there are no funds. There are children who do not have shoes to go to school and the government says that they do not have the money. But the government has money when it comes to bribing politicians. The word is that an MP gets 200 million rupees to join the government. This is the price of an MP to take part in this racket. But they say there is no money to help the people of the country. How does a country that cannot help its own people find 200 million rupees to bribe MPs? Is this stolen money? Is this the money that was mentioned in the Pandora Papers? This is the situation of the country. MP Rajita Sena Ratna was questioned on the possibility of SJB MPs defecting to the government. I don't know much about that. That story has been going on for many months now. The media has numbered the days of the government. I don't know anything about this. But it should be known that there is no difference between the economic development plans that this government is carrying out with Ranil Vikramasinghe and the plans that we have within SJB. Ranil Vikramasinghe works under the IMF support according to the conditions of the IMF. We said to go to the IMF as well. In that case, there was no policy difference between the two of us. The only difference was in the way work was done. We cannot oppose everything that Rani Vikramasinghe is doing today. We have to agree to how Rani Vikramasinghe is leading some things on because we must not forget the state that this country was in. We see a big change as of now in the country. Everyone says this. The people who used to blame Ranil now say that Ranil is good. We should go forward with the public opinion and not the opinions of our parties. What matters to people is the people of the country themselves and not political parties. We must discuss how we should come to an understanding. The Sri Lanka Bar Association or BASL has appointed a committee to study the new anti-terrorism bill. The Sri Lanka Bar Association says that a committee consisting of senior lawyers has been appointed to study the new anti-terrorism bill. Chairman Attorney Kaushalya Navaratna said that if the relevant committee recommends that there is any issue in the bill, legal action will be taken against it. The National Agrarian Collective called a press conference in Colombo today and expressed views on the new anti-terrorism bill. The anti-terrorism bill is merely against the protests happening in the country. In the future, there are plans to sign agreements that are harmful, like the MCC agreement. The anti-terrorism bill is brought to crush the public's opposition, including the farmers. The bill is not brought to suppress terrorist activities. The real reason for the bill is to crack down on anyone if they are forming an anti-government opinion. This act is brought in to shamelessly protect their power. If someone is standing up against things that are harmful to the country, they will suppress the people with this. If there are any parliamentarians who love this country among those 225, we have to ask them to read and oppose these bills. What is the opinion of the Pivituru Hello Rumea on the new anti-terrorism bill? Its leader Udega Manpila called a press conference and expressed his views in this regard. Trastavade Velakwe me Panata Navikarne Kirima Sanda Alut Panata Genea to Kenis Tower Api Hamomino. Habaiwe Trastavirodi Panatales. We are of the opinion that a new bill should be brought in to replace the Prevention of Terrorism Act. However, this anti terrorism act has been brought in to stop terrorism while also suppressing the media and taking away the people's right to express their opinions in this country. That bill was first presented in twenty eighteen. Even then we opposed it. The same fate that befell the people in twenty eighteen will once again rise. The freedom of expression is also an essential part of the national security mechanism. Therefore, we are confident that the Supreme Court will prevent such a bill which blatantly violates the Constitution. <laughs> The 
Now, a group of fishermen protested opposite the Point Pedro North Divisional Office in Vedamarachi, Jaffna. Fourteen fishermen associations took part in the protest against the use of illegal fishing methods. A heated exchange followed when they reached the Point Pedro North Divisional Office. They protested by obstructing the Jaffna Point Pedro Road. SJB MP Ashokabe Singha made the following remarks regarding the new anti-terrorism bill. Mehi tiyena vaganti barapu hama kisi ma kene kuta virode dakkwa na bhai rata tula esayam virode dakkwa. When looking at the clauses, we can see that no one can protest in the country and anyone who protests can be arrested for being an anti-government supporter. This is what the anti-terrorism bill is going to do. This act is being brought to suppress those protesting against the selling of public institutions and those protesting against the unjust tax policy of the government. Therefore, as the SJB, we will protest against the anti-terrorism bill. Now, the final rites of veteran actor Amaraseri Khalan Surya will be performed today at the Borella Public Cemetery. Amaraseri Khalan Surya, who was known as a man who redefined the role of the traditional lover in Sri Lankan cinema, was an artist close to the hearts of Sri Lankan theatre. He passed away in the early hours of Saturday at his residence in Jaila. He was 83 years old at the time of his demise. His mortal remains are currently lying at a private funeral parlour in Borella. Many people, including artists, have been visiting to pay their respects since yesterday. Sri Lankan rice farmers have been left helpless as they are unable to sell off their produce for a reasonable price. Now the harvest reaping process across many paddy lands across the Kaudula settlement in Polonarua is almost complete. However, as the paddy prices have dropped in the local market, these farmers are facing serious financial issues. Farmers noted that the private traders are purchasing their paddy for a low price as low as 65 rupees, adding that with such a price, they cannot even cover the cost for the cultivation. In addition to the paddy farmers, cinnamon farmers are also suffering due to a lack of a proper price. The Joint Union of Cinnamon Farmers held a press conference today and explained the situation that they are facing. 50 grams of cinnamon is 680 rupees, a kilo is 13,600 rupees. In Japan, a kilo of cinnamon costs 20,000 rupees. The Dubai market averages at 16,700 rupees. At what price is cinnamon, which has such high value, being purchased from us? 1,200 and 1,500 rupees. There are four or five big businessmen and they are the ones who are exploiting this. Those businessmen told us to grind the cinnamon well. But this is what we do. Now there is no market. News first with the people. Another leg of the Divi Savia program to empower Sri Lanka's student population took place centering the Kurunagala district. The Divi Savia program delivers school books and stationary items to Sri Lankan students across the country. The worthy initiative is carried out by LOLC Holdings and is supported by the Ministry of Education. Monday's leg of the Divi Savia program commenced from the Kalavila Putana Primary School in the Mahava Education Zone. Students from 32 schools located in the Mahava Education Zone were provided with school books and stationery. Furthermore, students from Teyadalua Primary School in the Nikavariti Education Zone were also provided with school books and stationery via the Divi Savia program.
school books and stationery by the Divisavia program were delivered to students at the Udalgama Primary School in the Mahara Education Zone. Furthermore, students from the Rollover Primary School were delivered with school books and stationery by the Divisavia program. School books and stationery were delivered to students across 14 schools at the Puja Pitya Zonal Education Office in Ibagamwa and the Kurunagala Teacher Training Centre on Friday, the 31st of March 2022. Students from the Buluwalakanda Primary School, Dunumava Primary School, Nelaula Primary School and Otuwela Primary School in the Ibagamu Education Zone received school books and stationery via the Divisavia program. Students from the Polpitya Primary School, Gammana Junior School, Sir Anagarika Dagrapala College and Sapamal Kumara Primary School belonging to the Kurunagala Zone Education Division also received school books and stationery on Friday. Divisavia is taking place under two phases. Under Phase 1, 1,419 schools with less than 50 students are provided with school books and stationery while under Phase 2, 1,552 schools with students numbering 50 to 100 will be given school books and stationery. Now on to some news overseas. Finished Conservative leader Petteri Orpo has won a nail-biting three-way election race, defeating Prime Minister Sana Marin's centre-left. Leader of the National Coalition Party said, quote, We got the biggest mandate, unquote, after a dramatic night in which the result gradually swung away from Marine Social Democrats. Orpo secured 20.8% of the vote, ahead of the right-wing populist Finns party and the centre-left. The populist won a record 20.1%. It is a bitter defeat for Marine, who increased her party's seats and secured 19.9% of the vote. She continues to enjoy high poll ratings and has been widely praised for steering Finland towards imminent entry into NATO and navigating her country through the COVID-19 pandemic. Shortly after the Conservative leader claimed victory, the centre-left leader conceded the election. She told supporters, quote, Congratulations to the winner of the elections. Congratulations to the National Coalition Party. Congratulations to the party. Democracy has spoken. Unquote. For weeks, the three parties had been almost level in the polls and as the results came in, it became too close to call. Foreign media gave Pateriopo's national coalition victory with the biggest number of seats in parliament. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is gearing up for a battle ahead of his scheduled court hearing tomorrow. Trump is expected to fly to New York City from his Mar-a-Lago home on Monday to face charges related to hush money payments made to an adult film actress. He then plans to return to Florida following his court hearing where he will address his supporters. Trump has continued to deny any wrongdoing. His lawyer promised that any charges against the former president will be fought vigorously. Media reports have said that Trump will be facing more than 30 charges related to business fraud over a $130,000 payout to an adult movie performer in 2016 that was made in an attempt to buy her silence over an alleged affair. Now, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, a powerful seven-magnitude earthquake shook northwestern Papua New Guinea before dawn today. The U.S. Geological Survey reported the Tembla struck 97 kilometers from the coastal town of Wewok at a depth of 62 kilometers and occurred shortly after 4 a.m. local time. No tsunami order was issued. The seismology agency said, such loosening, known as liquefaction, can cause substantial subsidence and horizontal sliding of the ground, 
and result in major damage. The earthquake shook an area about 100 kilometers east of the border with Indonesia on the island of New Guinea. The remote New Britain region, part of an archipelago in eastern Papua New Guinea, was struck by a magnitude 6.2 earthquake in late February. Sports Minister Rosha Anwana Singh has appointed a technical consultative committee for Sri Lanka cricket. Now, former Sri Lanka cricket captain Sanat Jayasurya is the chairman of the committee. Favis Maruf, Asanta Dimel, Charit Siranayaka and Kapila Vijay Guruvadana are other members of the committee. The appointment of the committee was gazetted by the sports ministry. And with that, we wrap up the news for now. For the News First team, I'm Shehan Ranatunga. Thank you for watching. At the KTA, at the Radio, Cyber Avakashe Kalabana, Uat Salakuna. News First YouTube channel, Adama, subscribe Karana. News First, Janata Vasamaka. News First News Alert, Obi Jangamudurakataneta, Obe, Dailu Paribu Gikeknam, English Alert Seva Vallabagani Matter, in FU Lesar, Singlish Alert Seva Vallabagani Matter, in US Lesar, Tanglish Alert Seva Vallabagani Matter, in AT Lesar Type Kerr, I see Hathe Atta Sin Karana. News First, Janata Vallabagani